we want to find the partial sum for the geometric sequence. Since we are summing a sequence, the directions could also say, just find the sum of the geometric series. And since we know we have a geometric series, we can use this partial sum formula here, where S sub n is equal to A sub one times the quantity one minus R raised to the power of n divided by the quantity one minus R where a sub one is the first term, r is the common ratio, and m would be the number of terms. So looking at our series, the first term is negative two, so we know a sub one is equal to negative two. The common ratio r would be the constant that we multiply by to find successive terms. Notice if we multiply by two, negative two times two is negative four, negative four times two is negative eight, and so on. So our common ratio r is equal to positive two. If we weren't able to determine r by analyzing the pattern, because we know we're summing a geometric sequence, we can use this formula here to determine r, where r is equal to a sub n divided by a sub n minus one, which means if we select a term and divide by the term before it, we can also find our common ratio r. Notice that negative four divided by negative two is positive two, negative eight divided by negative four is positive two and so on. But notice to use our partial sum formula, we also have to find n, which would be the number of terms in this series. And again, since we know that the terms come from a geometric sequence, we can use the formula a sub n is equal to a sub one times r raised to the power of n minus one to determine the value of n. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna let a sub n be equal to the last term so we can find the value of n. So that would give us the equation negative 64 equals a sub one, the first term, which is negative two, times r, which we know is positive two, to the power of n minus one. Let's go ahead and isolate this exponential part by dividing both sides by negative two. This would give us 32 is equal to two raised to the power of n minus one. Now to solve for n, we'll obtain a common base and therefore the exponents must be equal. 32 is equal to five factors of two. So we can write this as two to the fifth is equal to two to the power of n minus one. Well if these are equal and the bases are equal, then five must equal n minus one. So five equals n minus one add one on both sides, we have n equals six. So this series has six terms. So now we have all the information we need to find the partial sum. Since n is six, we have s sub six equals a sub one, which is negative two, times the quantity one minus two raised to the sixth power, divided by one minus r, which again is two. Now we'll go ahead and simplify this to find our partial sum. We have one minus two to the sixth, where two to the sixth is equal to 64. One minus 64 is equal to negative 63. One minus two is equal to negative one. So we have negative two times negative 63. That's positive 126 divided by negative one. So we have negative 126 as our partial sum. And since this series only has six terms, since n is equal to six, and we already have four of them, let's go ahead and find the remaining two and check, check this a long way by actually finding the sum rather than using the formula. Since r is equal to two, we'll multiply by two to find the next term. Negative eight times two is negative 16. Negative 16 times two is equal to negative 32. Negative 32 times two gives us our last term of negative 64. And this sum is negative 126, verifying that we applied our partial sum formula correctly. I hope you found this explanation helpful.